Welcome. It's so good to be with you on this Wednesday as we get together for a little midweek Bible study and devotional time. And I'm so glad that you've taken some time out to join us to do just that today and uh, hopefully be encouraged and uh, uplifted and uh, continue on through the rest of your week or whenever it is that you're watching this. And uh, we're so glad that you have, have taken some time out to join us today. You know, on Sunday mornings, we are in uh, a series called Home Improvement, and we're looking through or walking through Paul's words, the Apostle Paul's words in Ephesians chapters 5 through 6, as he talks to us about some of the key relational arenas of our lives, namely that of our marriages, you know, our relationship with our spouse, uh, our families, kids' relationship with their parents, parents' relationship with their kids, and, and even our relationships in the workplace. And this past Sunday in particular, we looked at Paul's words uh, relating to children and parents, specifically his words calling children to honor their parents and respect and obey uh, their parents and the role that, that parents play in, in the lives of, of children. And so I was thinking about that this week, and and I was thinking about it from the perspective of a parent, uh, because I am a parent of two two awesome kids. Um, but but what it looks like, I was thinking about what it looks like from um, from a parent's perspective to to love our children, what that means to love our children, and how we um, you know we want what's best for them, and yet. That isn't always seen um, in in similar ways from our children. You know, we we, we what we show as love and wanting the best for them uh, doesn't always seem like it's uh, at least from their perspective <laughs> like it's uh, the love that we think it is. And it also got me thinking about how that relates to us and our relationship with God. For instance, let me just kind of um, spell out, I guess, for lack of better words, what I'm, I'm trying to say here. What would you say in response to these hypothetical parental statements? If I were to say, you, say to you things like, well, you know, I know I shouldn't let my child play with matches, but he really wants to, and, and I just love him so much. Or, you know, I love my children, and so I am just going to let them play in the street because that's what they want to do. Or, you know, I just left my two-year-old in the car while I went into the store because she really didn't want to go in and I didn't want to make her because I just love her so much. Now, obviously, I know that these are quite extreme and facetious examples, and it doesn't take much to recognize that these kinds of actions are not very loving at all. But my point is, the reason I tell those is, is that as parents, it doesn't take long to understand that loving our children means sometimes saying no, right? It means setting boundaries. It means requiring certain actions and behaviors and discouraging other actions and behaviors. It does not mean letting your children do whatever they want to do, right? Parental love recognizes that you know what is best for your child better than they often do. It's why vegetables get eaten and it's why dessert isn't allowed to be the main course, at least not always to be the main course course. You know, so often today in our, in, our, in our culture, especially in today's culture, people define love based on what they want, right? Here, here's what I want. And so, um, you know, if, if you love me, you're going to let me do what I want. That's, you hear that so often from teenagers and young people. You know, if you really love me as a parent, then, then you would just let me go where I want to go and, you know, spend whatever money I want to spend, do whatever I want to do, whatever's going to make me happy. If you really love me, you would let me do whatever it is that makes me happy. However, good and wise parents know that real love is making and enforcing decisions that are the best thing for the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health health of their children, even when it's not what the child wants in that moment, and even when it's not easy sometimes for us as parents or for our children. But here's why I want to relate it to God, and let's take it a step further, because if we understand this, con- this, this concept of parental love, why would we not think that it applies to our relationship with God as well? God is often called our Father, and our Father loves us, and His love for us is perfect, which is way better than any of us as parents can say. We, we love our kids with everything that we have, but our love is, is not perfect. We, we try, uh, but it is not God's love. God's love is perfect, and not only does He want what is best for us, but He absolutely knows what is best for us. And because He loves us, He is not governed by what we think is best for us or what we are sure is the best thing for our lives. After all, if babies really knew what was best for them, they wouldn't need a parent. And if we really knew what was best for us, 
we wouldn't really need God. You know, sooner or later, hopefully, most of us figure out that we don't always know what is best for us, although unfortunately for a lot of us, we have to find that out the hard way a lot of times. But God does know what is best for you, and He is the Father who loves you. Now, it may not always be exactly what you want, and it may not always be easy, but you can trust in your Father's love and goodness to bring about what is truly best for you and for your life. Hope you have a blessed day. God bless.